What's up everybody? This is Justin with Me, Myself, and Dice, a channel dedicated to solo board games. Welcome to part one of our spooktacular special, our Halloween episode where we'll be focusing on games with spooky themes. And we're starting today with a tiny little game called Gate. A gate all fits in this nice little tin, Altoid size, everything fits in there nicely. Easy to pack, easy to carry around. But it's a deck building tower defense game. So we'll be building our deck and defending our, well, our gate against some creepy looking monsters. So let's get down to the table and see how it plays. Welcome down to the table, everyone. I've got everything kind of shuffled and set out, but I want to show you these cards a little bit. So waves of enemies will be coming out, attacking our gates, attacking our tower, our farm, and causing fear in our village. And we're trying to stop that, or at least survive it. This is our village, and we start with the pyramid. And the pyramid is going to have this cube on it, and every time the fear level goes up, it moves from left to right up the pyramid. If it ever gets to the top, then we lose. Now we can lower the fear and go back down, but anytime it moves left to right over or onto one of these squares, then one of these icons and events are gonna happen. The sun brings out more heroes, the attack, the, do damage to the farm, do damage to the tower, do damage to the gate, and then lose. So that is the pyramid. We'll go ahead and put the thing on there. Then we have the tower and the farm. Now, if we lose these, it's not the end of the game, but enemies will do damage specifically to the farm. While the farm is in play, we get plus one to a single purchase once per turn while this is still standing. And the tower is pretty much the same, except it's plus one to a single attack when we're attacking enemies while it's still standing. And then this is what we are guarding, the gate. If ever this is destroyed, we lose the game. If the tower or the farm or both are destroyed and an enemy wants to attack one of these, then the damage is transferred to the gate instead. So we have this set up. We put the health dice on here. They all start at six as per the little icons on the side. And then we have our recruits here and we get four recruits in basically a market. And I'll show you what these are like. So this is how much they cost, and these are what you can use them for. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute, and some of these are going to have special abilities at the bottom, and we'll see that when it happens. This deck is our hero deck. We don't mess with that until the fear goes up and then heroes come out. And then this is our starting hand, and you do have a hand limit of three cards. So let's look at our starting cards. We have the farmer, who her abilities, she can use one money, she can repair one. She has a special ability when she's repairing the farm, she gets a plus one to that. We have the guard, which is one money and one attack. And we have the monk, which is one money to buy and one calm, which when you play that, the fear level goes back down by that number. Now on our turn, we get to play our whole hand out and you can only use each card for one thing. So usually in the starting turn, we're going to use it for the money, but we'll see. Then we have our turn sequence card here. It's very easy. Enemies advance, you draw up, you use commands, you recruit, you use cards, and then enemies attack. And we'll go through all of that. So let's start at the beginning. Enemies advance. So the first enemy to come out is a spider with the word I in it. It has three health. When it attacks, it attacks the gate and it causes one fear. And it's worth one victory point at the end if we defeat it. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little counter right here just so we can kind of visually keep track of this. So the enemies advance, we draw up. So now we actually get our cards in our hand. Then we can use commands. Commands are on the back of this. These are inefficient abilities. You can use two coins to get one attack 
you can use one coin, discard all of the recruits in the recruit row, and immediately replace them. Two to use one comm, or two to use one repair. So if there's nothing else you do and you have just money, you can use that. So we're not going to use any commands this time. We're going to go skip that and go to recruit. So we have three money plus the farm is four. And we're going to use all four of that. We're going to get the tax collector first. As with most deck builders, she goes in the discard pile. This immediately gets replaced. And then we can only forward the mercenary. So he's going to go in here. And then we have the craftsman. Okay, the next one we've recruited. We can't use our cards because we have no more in hand. And then the enemies attack. So he's going to attack the spider. He's going to attack this down to five. And he's going to cause one fear. And again, this makes a hero come out. And we get the Baroness. And then the enemies advance. So that moves over. And you have two spots for enemies here. So the next one to come out is the Plague Rat. Four health. Attacks the farm for one. Causes one fear and is worth three victory points. So in each wave, there are three enemies and there are three waves. Okay, so the enemies advanced and now we draw up. Let's shuffle this little deck. I will probably sleeve these cards after this game. They're black and you shuffle a lot. And they're tiny cards. So, hand of three. And we got the farmer the tax collector, and you may charge this card if it's in your discard, and the guard. I think I will take advantage of having four and then plus one with the farm, having five money to get the guardian. This gets immediately replaced. We have the blacksmith. Okay, we didn't use commands. We recruited. We have no cards to use, so the enemies attack. Attacks the gate for one, goes down to four. Fear goes up by one, and the farm goes down from that. Then he attacks the farm, so this goes down to four. And then he causes one fear, and we get another hero. And we get the knight. Now the heroes are one-time use. It says one-time use there. So as soon as you get them in your hand, you use them, and they're out of the game. Okay. Now the enemies advance. Now I said there's only two spots for enemies up here. So when the enemies advance, it pushes one out. And the enemy, if he gets pushed out, you didn't defeat him, he gets to do one shot at your gate. So this goes down to three. And then the last of the wave one enemies is coming out, and we have the Skelepede. And I have to say, the art on this has really grown on me. Especially on the enemy. Okay, we draw up to three cards, so we have three left. We have our Baroness, our Monk, and our Mercenary. We're not going to use any of the commands, I don't think. We can recruit, so let's use the Baroness plus one from there to get the Tinker. He's one money, three repair, and one attack. Goes in our discard. Then we use cards. We're going to use our mercenary for his two attack. And we are going to attack for three because we get plus one to a single attack. So three on the Skelepede. He's defeated. We get that two points for our victory pile. And the monk we're going to use to lower the fear by one. And again, when it goes backwards, we do not have to deal with that. But when it goes back up, we do get another hero. We needed to replace this, and we have the champion, which is a fantastic all-around card. But specifically, after one money, one repair, two calm, or three attack is just fantastic. She's expensive, though, six. Okay, the enemies attack, so the farm goes down to three. And the fear goes up by one, and we get another hero, which is the traveler.
and the traveler has one money, one of each. It's the only one that's not concentrated in one area. And it has, you may draw two more cards when you play this. Okay, the enemies advance. Now this one does not get removed and does not get a pot shot at our gate because it doesn't get pushed. And we have the Rat Lord coming out. This is the first of wave two, six health, two on the gate, no fear, five victory points. So we shuffled these guys and Gil three cards out. What can we get done this turn? We have the Farmer, which we may need to use for her repair. We have the Guard, which will get us one attack, and the Guardian. Oh, that's tough. We're not going to use the commands. We're not going to recruit. Let's use cards. We're going to use the Guardian and the guard to attack for three, plus our tower is four. Defeat the plague rat. And we'll use the farmer to repair, but when she repairs the farm, she gets plus one. So, goes up to five. And then the enemies attack. The rat lord's gonna attack the gate for two. It's down to seven. And no fear. The enemies advance, and we have the Rotworm, five health, two to the farm, and one fear. He's nasty. We draw up, one, two, three. We have the Tinker. We have our Traveler, and we have our Mercenary. I am going to use the Traveler to knock that down one. You may draw two more cards, and this is removed from the game. So let's draw two more cards. We get our tax collector and we get a monk. We're going to use our three coins plus the farm ability, so four, to get the blacksmith. And his ability is you may double the attack of another card. We get the alchemist. You may trash a card in the discard. He has a nice spread there, also expensive. And then I think we're going to do a repair for three here so that's back up to four and then we'll attack for two three one more plus the tower so two and then plus one three on the rotworm okay the enemies attack we have the route lord he's gonna do two to the gate so that's down to two he causes no fear. The Rot Worm does two to this, so down to three. And then causes one fear, which means another hero. Now there are only five heroes, and once they're gone, they're gone. We have the Bishop. That'll be good for controlling the fear. And then the enemies advance. So he is gone and does one damage to our gate, back down to one. And the Rot Worm is moving over so that the dark priest can come out which is the last of wave two five health two to the tower one fear and six points not really worried about points just more about surviving okay we have one card to draw so we'll shuffle this up we have the knight the mercenary and the blacksmith wow this is fantastic we're not recruiting. Let's play the blacksmith to repair two. Um, yeah, let's repair this. Three, four, five. So five. And then you may double the attack of another card. Well, we have our knight. That is eight attack. One time use. Eight attack. So let's start. He has five. So, one, two, and he's dead. And then we have six more. So once you kill one, you can roll that over to the next enemy. And he is only a health of five, so we don't even have to put counters on him. Bam. 
And then we have our mercenary, which we don't need to use to attack, so we'll use him to repair the gate for one. Fantastic. Great. That was one of the best turns I've ever had. Okay. Enemies attack. There's no enemies to attack. That's fantastic. Enemies advance. One new one comes out. The Grave Lord. Grave Lord is first of wave three. Nine point seven health. He attacks one damage to each location and causes one fear. He actually is my favorite, I think, of the game art-wise. He's fantastic. Look at that, dude. He looks like a Grave Lord. Okay, so enemies advance. We draw up. We got the Guardian, the Farmer, and the Tinker. I'm feeling really good about this, and I shouldn't have said that. I'm really happy with where we are. And although I think it would be good to lower the fear, I think I want to save that. So we're going to use three plus one for the tower to attack. So four on him out of seven. And then we are going to use her to repair the gate by one. Yeah, the gate. So was that uh, eight, so nine. Got that. And that's all we can do. The enemies attack. So he's going to attack one here, down to four. One here, down to two on that dice. And then one here, down to five. And then he causes one fear. This goes up, and it is the tower, so the tower will get another hit, down to four. Okay, the enemies advance. He moves over. We have the Death Guard, another one of my favorites. Looking, not to play against. Uh, six health, one uh, to the tower, and two fear. So we do need to take care of some fear if we can this turn. Th three of four cards in our deck. We have the bishop, perfect. The monk, this is why I didn't do fear last time, because I knew he was in our deck. The monk and the guard. Okay, well, we're going to use the bishop to go down three. One, two, three, back there. We'll use the monk to go all the way back to the beginning, and the guard will get two hits on... Let me rethink that. Is there anything I can do? Nope. Oops, it was not that one. It was this one. There's really nothing, no other option. So, we're going to do two hits on the death guard. The grave is going to leave, and we can only get him up to six health. That stinks. Okay, the enemies attack. So, one to each. This is down to three. This is down to one. On that dice. And this is down to three. Fear goes up by one. And we get the last of these, which is the engineer. Great. Great timing for that. And then Death Guard wants to do one to this. So it's down to two and two fear which means one to the farm and another hero. We don't have it. It's just a safe spot now. Uh, so one to the farm is down to two. And then the enemies advance. So he's going to leave, hobble away. Did a good amount of damage. I thought we could take him out. He's going to do one damage here. So that's down to six. He moves over. And the last of wave three is the Abomination. Six health, two to the farm, and one fear. Eight points. So now we're at the end game. Basically, there are no enemies left, so we skip the enemies advance phase. And we just keep going back and forth. They keep doing hits, and we just try to take them out before they raise the fear to the end or defeat the gate. Uh, so it's who can outlast the other, pretty much. So this has one card, shuffle these up, and we have a really good chance at this. I say that. Two, three. We get our tax collector, our farmer, and our monk. I say that and there is no, <laughs> there is no attack in that whatsoever. Okay. Well, let's go down one fear with the monk. 
could get the Craftsman, but I don't think I'm going to go through my deck that many more times. Uh, I need the Farmer to repair the farm, so up to four. There's four. And then the Tax Collector we're going to use, and we're going to do one of these commands, which is we are going to... <laughs> we're going to attack. We get plus one to a single attack. So two more will go on the Death Guard. And then we're going to use the Tax Collector's ability to trash this and get it out of the game. So it's not in our deck if we do go back around. Okay, the enemy's attack. So he's going to attack the tower for one. So down to one. And I really sh don't want to use the tower. I'd rather lose this. Maybe I should have repaired the tower. Fear goes up twice. So the tower's gone. I should have repaired the tower. It's gone. I just turn it over to its hardcore mode side. Just the red reminds me it's gone. As well as not having a dice on it. And then attack the farm for two. So down to two. And one fear. And it's a safe spot. Enemies can't advance. We draw cards. One, two, three. We have our mercenary. Our tinkerer. And our guard. Okay, nothing fancy here. We're going to play the mercenary for two. And that kills the death guard. And then we're going to put two on him. All right. He attacks. The farm is gone. Fear goes up. It's a blank box, so it's the last safe spot before they start doing damage to the gate. And then we draw up. Three cards left. Blacksmith, Engineer, and Guardian. So we are going to use the Engineer, one-time use, for repair, and the Blacksmith for his two repair. And we have his ability to double the attack of another card. So that's six repair. We have the gate back at full health at 12. And then we will use him to attack for two more. He is four out of six. He attacks the farm for two, but can't. So this is down to four. This raises up to the gate, and it does one more damage to three. And we shuffle up. So you see there's not a lot of hand deck building in this game. It's just knowing when to buy and when to not usually when to stop, which is most deck builders, but it's a lot earlier than you think. Three cards. We only have seven in our deck now because we've gotten rid of that. We've ran through the heroes, so it's slimmed down. We got the Guardian, the Tinkerer, and the Farmer. We only need to do two damage, so we play the Guardian, and the Abomination is gone. So our final score is 30, and that is the best I've ever done. There is a hardcore mode. A hardcore mode. Looking for more of a challenge, you can attempt to play the gate in the hardcore mode. Simply flip the gate, farm, tower, and fear mid cards to the reverse sides. Your gate will now only have 10 health. Your farm will in tower 5 health. In addition, the fear mid will be more challenging. Winning in hardcore mode will gain you 10 extra victory points. So I say we shuffle it up and watch me lose spectacularly. Now let's get back down to the creepy village. And I don't have as good a feeling about winning this one as I did the last one. But we'll see what happens. So first, enemies advance. We have the Skelepede. Three health, two to the tower, and one fear. Now let's look. Everything this is the same except it only has five hit points on it on each space, but the pyramid has changed. This spot was a hero last time, now it's a tower. This spot was blank, now it is a farm, and then everything else is the same, so yeah, it's not as easy to get heroes and more not so nice things happen. So we have our opening hand, same as always, the guard, the monk, and the farmer. Nothing to repair. We need something to recruit, though. We have the Swindler. You may draw one more card. I always like the card draws. 
the priest, the champion, love to get that, and the tinker. All right. Well, we can get up to four with the farm to recruit. So I guess we'll do that. Uh, do, 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 do. Between the priest and the swindler, that's really tough. I think I'd rather have more powerful money right now and more powerful fear than one of each. Okay, let's replace it with the minstrel. I like that dude. He has a nice mustache. And then the enemies attack. Two to the tower. Down to three. And no fear. Which is bad. The first time. I actually would love to get fear the first turn. So that I could shuffle and pull the a hero. But not going to happen. Play Grats. One fear. One to the farm. And he does two. Or has four health. And this time I'm certainly not caring about points because there's no way I'm going to get 30 points even if I do win. All right. Three of the four cards in my hand and we got our priest, our farmer, and our guard. I think the first thing we'll do is use the farmer for her money, combine with the farm, and get the minstrel. That'll give us some extra buying power. We get the guardian out. I'm okay with that. And then we'll use the two attack on here plus the tower to help us to get rid of the Skelepede. That will save our tower. And then the Plague Rat's going to poison the farm down to four. And one fear, which does get us a hero, and it is the Engineer. Usually on the non-hardcore mode, I hate getting the Engineer early, but I think we'll be okay right now. Okay, he attacked. The spider comes out. One against the gate and one fear. So two fear next time will mean one to the farm, one to the tower, one to the gate, and one to the farm. And let's see, we have the monk, the guard, and the priest. And this is where the game gets tough. I can actually recruit the guardian if I play all of these for recruit, but I would it would be at a Great cost. I uh, think I'd rather take it now because I could also two, three, I could kill off the spider. And then I could use that for one fear, which would give me another hero. That's probably the smarter play. Okay, let's do that. So we're not going to recruit. We're going to hit the spider for three. He's gone. And then the monk is going to reduce the fear back down to zero. Plague rat's going to attack down to three on the farm. And fear goes up and we get the knight. It's a little early for the knight. Okay. Enemies advance. We get the Dark Priest, 5 health, 2 to the tower, and 1 fear. And we draw 3 cards. We have the Minstrel, the Farmer, and the Engineer. So let's repair 4 things. Now you can split up your repairs. You can't split up your damage. You can roll over damage, but you can't split it up. You can split up your repairs. So we have 4. But I don't want to do this out of order, so first of all, let's spend... Three plus one from the farm and get the swindler. And then let's repair four. So I'm thinking one here, two here, back up to five, and I guess one more here. So I guess I'm thinking just refill the health of everything. So I played that as if I had choices there, but I didn't. So, Plague Rat attacks the farm, down to four. One fear is the farm again, down to three. Dark Priest is going to hit the tower for two. 
It's down to three. He's going to raise the fear. That's the tower again, down to two. I really don't want to lose the tower. Enemies advance. Plague Rat kicks the gate on the way out. Bends a bar and down to four. Rat Lord comes out. He's going to do two to the gate and no fear. And we have our knight, our farmer, and our priest. Well, we might as well use the knight. Plus one from the tower. We're going to kill off the dark priest. Let's use the priest to get the warden. It'll give us two more attack. The rat catcher comes out. Let's use the farmer to repair the farm for two. Back up to the full health. And then he attacks the gate for two. Down to two on that die, so seven. Fear does not go up. He moves along and makes space for the rot worm, which is two to the farm and one fear. Three cards. We have our monk, our swindler, and our minstrel. So we're looking at those icons and those numbers. Okay, I think I'm going to have to be bold here and take a chance. Let's play the Swindler down for one recruit. It allows us to draw one more card, which is the guard. Okay. Minstrel for two recruit. So that's three, four with the monk. Actually, let's do four with the guard. And plus one, that's five. We can get the guardian. And then we can use a power or an ability. Let's use that and drop that down by one. Okay, Rat Lord's going to attack the gate twice. That's gone. No fear. He's going to attack. Rot Worm's going to slither through our farmlands and corrupt it by two. And this goes up by one, which drops this by one down to one. The Rat Lord is going to do another damage to our gate. Down to four. As he leaves, Rotworm's coming out. We're into wave three. Death Guard. And we got the Mercenary. Death Guard is going to do one to our tower and two fear. So we're talking about going up three fear this turn. If we don't do something about it, it's going to destroy our farm, destroy our tower, and do one damage to the gate. Ouch. Let's do something about it. Three cards. We have the Swindler, the Priest, and the Minstrel. So that's what we have to work with. Plus we can draw one more card once we decide what we want to do with the Swindler. Okay, the one thing the Swindler can do that these guys can't is repair. So let's repair with the Swindler, which means we're not going to do any recruiting. Of course, I, yeah, I'm too, too close to dead. Uh, so we're going to draw a card and repair the tower by one up to two. We got the guardian, which gives us more options. I think we are going to bring the fear level down by three down to the, back to the beginning. And I think we're going to repair the farm. For one up to three and repair the gate for one. Actually, we'll repair the farm for two up to four. Okay. So he attacks the farm for two, back down to two. One fear. We get a hero. And we get the Baroness. Attack the tower for one. And the fear goes up by two, which takes out the tower. Put a little red cube there just to remind me that I can't use it. I should have put one more on the tower. Uh, okay, Rotworm's going to leave. He's going to kick the gate. Three. We've gotten farther than I thought we might. Abomination has six health, two to the farm, and one fear. So we're going up three fear this turn. Farm will be gone. The gate will take one, two, three. The gate will be gone. We'll lose this turn if we 
I mean, if we did nothing. So we have three cards, the guard, the monk, and the warden. So those are the icons we have to work with, no special abilities. We'll use the warden to repair the farm, back up to three. We will attack the abomination for one. And we will lower the fear. No, we won't. And we'll just discard the monk. I can't really do anything with them. The only thing I do is refresh this row. I really don't want to because of the champion. But let's do it anyway. We have the craftsman. Tax collector. Alchemist. And Mason. And he gets to do one damage to the gate on the way out. And the Grave Lord comes out, which does one damage to each, seven health. Ah, it's gonna be tough. Okay, we have one card, two cards, three cards. Farmer, Swindler, and Guard. Okay, she gets plus one from repairing the farm. He gets draw one more card. I really think we're dead this turn. So, let's repair one to the gate, up to three, draw a card. It's the monk. I mean, I could buy a card. That doesn't really help me. Lowering the fear doesn't really help me too much. It's going to go up by two. Actually, it helps me not to lower the fear. Uh, so we'll discard the monk. Well, we might get to use this as a command. Um, we'll repair the farm. She gets repaired for two, so up back up to full health. And we'll use two for a command to repair the gate back up to four. Don't think it's going to help us too much, but he does two to the farm. So down to three. One fear does one damage to the gate because the tower is not standing. Down to three. And then one to each. So two, two. And one of there brings us down to one. One fear gets us a hero. And we have the traveler. Hmm. Okay. Nothing to advance. We're on to our final stand. Not looking so hot. We get the Baroness, the Guardian, and the Warden. Okay, that should be on that. So that's going to attack the farm if that goes up. Don't really think I need the farm anymore, but it's a nice buffer. So we're going to use the four off of her to do two commands. We are going to repair the gate by one, back up to two. And we're going to lower this by one. So that's the two commands. You can't do the same two commands. You have to do two different ones. And we still have the guardian and the warden. Okay, so we will repair the gate for two, back up to four, and do two damage to the Abomination. Halfway to taking him out. Abomination does two here, the farm's gone. Farm is gone. He does one fear, we get another hero, the last one is the Bishop. He does one to each, so he's going to do one, two, three damage to this, and four damage because he's good. that's going to go up, and he's gone. And we lost spectacularly, but we made it all the way to the end. So I'm okay with that. Well, that is the gate. And that is gate. Such a small little game. Fits very nicely. I love it because I can throw it in my messenger bag or my photography sling. I'm a photographer, so I, before COVID, I did a lot of work in cafes and coffee shops. So this is the type of game that I would throw in my everyday sling or my messenger bag with my computer and go do work and take a brain break, refresh my coffee. This fits nicely on a small table. I don't play a lot of small games in the house because I have this table where I can just set a game up and leave it up for days. But this is the kind of game I throw in a bag and, and just pull out to give myself a, a brain break, give myself a nice little 
brain exercise and have a little fun. People would probably come up and ask what I was doing and I could share with them about uh, solo board gaming, which is cool. So part of the reason that I started this channel is to bring some attention to the solo board game community and to provide resources for the solo board game community, not just on my channel, but there are plenty of other places that we as solo gamers for years have been gathering and chatting and sharing games. I found this game because of a solo board game group on Facebook simply called Solo Board Gamers. So this is a great resource. Uh, they were talking about it. It kind of had good buzz going on. So I went in and asked a little bit about it and then I got hopped on and ordered the game. It's a uh, a good place just to talk about other games, see what other games people are playing, maybe discover new games or ask questions about games that you may be playing and have questions about. So I want to start doing some shout outs to other content creators, other board game media and other resources for you as a solo gamer to go and maybe consume some content or ask questions or interact within a community. So for the solo, solo board game group, I'll put the link down below. Also, I've joined the Gateway Network. A uh, link will, for that will be down below, and this is a group of content creators, uh, be it on YouTube or Instagram or podcasts, that are adding to the board game hobby. And this is a great resource to maybe discover someone that you don't know. So if you enjoy this content, think about hitting that like and subscribe button, and definitely hit that bell icon so that you're notified when the next video goes live. Hope you have a good one, and as always, happy gaming. Oh, <laughs>